we thank you for ordering our steps in your word. We thank you, Lord God, that yesterday was just yesterday, but today is the first day of the rest of our lives. Lord, we lift you up this morning because you have a word for your people. You have an example of how a good father, a good man ought to look like. Lord, you have an example for us of saving faith and how black men and white men, red men, yellow men must man up. So, Lord, come today like a mighty Russian wind, Lord. Move us out of our places, Father God. Let us decrease that you will increase that we will never be the same again. Have your way in this house. Have your way through these young people, Lord God, and do what no other power on earth can do. We'll forever give your name the praise and glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
want to start off in prayer, so maybe bow. Dear Lord, we just thank you for allowing us to see this day on today, dear Lord. We just thank you for getting us started on our way. And we just want to thank you for everything that you do for us, dear Lord, and everything that you have in store for us, Lord. And right now, dear Lord, I just ask that you will touch everybody in the sanctuary and everybody watching on Facebook Live, dear Lord. And I just want to say I love you and I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. All right, so today... Just get your Bibles out. I will be coming from Ephesians 6 and 4. Say amen when you got it. All right. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Today, the title of the text is The Example. Today is Father's Day. It seems that this day doesn't carry the same amount of importance as Mother's Day. Someone was telling me the other day that more phone calls are made on Mother's Day than any other holiday, but more collect calls are made on Father's Day than any other holiday. When I asked a friend about Father's Day, they said, it's just like Mother's Day, only you don't spend as much on gifts. Father's Day for many is not a good day. The, especially in this time, the memory of a dad is an absent t-shirt. Okay. Millions of men don't attend church in spite of the fact of growing up in a church background. Yes, yes. It has been revealed that if a child is the first to become Christian, only a small percent chance that all the rest of the family will follow. All right. If a mother becomes Christian first, it goes up a little bit and there's a higher chance. But if a father is first to become Christian, yes, come on, come on. everybody else in the household will follow. When a father goes first spiritually, good things happen at home. I'm reminded of a story, Pastor Joyce. A father and his son went on a fishing trip. All right. When they returned home, the father was talking to his friend at the same time the son was talking to his friend. Okay. The friend asked the father how the fishing trip went, and the father replied, absolutely miserable. We got to the lake late. Okay. The fishes were all the fish fishing spots were all taken up. Right, right. The lines were all tangled. Yeah. My son was hot and the mosquitoes were biting. It was the worst day of my life. When the son's friend asked how it went, he said, best day of my life. Okay. We didn't catch a thing, but I got to spend the day along with my dad. Oh, right now, I'm going to talk about a good father. We're going to see a story of a father and the love for his child. All right. A religious leader comes to Jesus. He is in great need. His name is Jerry's. And he is a father, and he has one child around 12 years old. His daughter is sick unto death. He tells Jesus that she may already be dead. This father falls at the feet of Jesus. He won't take no for an answer. Jesus, if you would just come lay your hand on my daughter, she will be healed. This is a father that is willing to do whatever it takes. He will do whatever it takes to help his daughter. Jairus learned that day that our timing and God's timing do not run parallel. All right. This story teaches fathers to be patient. Yes. Now I'm going to give you an example of a father that you guys should not be following. Uh -oh. Come on. Eli was a high priest of Shiloh and so were his two sons, Phineas and Hophni. Okay. Eli's sons were wicked and greedy. They would take meat from the sacrifices in the tabernacle and commit adultery with the women who served. Right. Eli knew what his sons were doing, yet he said nothing, much like fathers today. Uh. Fathers today know that their sons are doing things that they should not be doing, but they just let them walk all over them. God sent a prophet to Eli to rebuke them, but Eli remained a passive parent in the end, which led to his and his son's death in the Ark of the Covenant. Now I want to get back on the good side of things. Right. As the first man and first human father, Adam had no example to follow but God's. Regrettably, he strayed from God's example and ended up plunging into a world of sin. Ultimately, he, ultimately, he was left to deal with the tragedy of his son, Cain killing his son, Abel. Adam has much to teach fathers today about the consequences and the necessity of obeying God. Here are a few lessons to learn from Adam. God is looking for fathers who freely choose to obey him and submit to his love. Right. Fathers with integrity live in the knowledge of knowing that nothing is hidden from God's sight. Instead of blaming others, godly fathers take responsibility for their own failures and shortcomings. Yes, sir. Yes. In conclusion of today's message, 
A true father is one willing to invest time and effort into his family, even when he feels tired or even when he feels like he's out of his comfort zone. A true devoted father is one who is willing to make compromises and sacrifices and the needs and wishes and happiness for the sake of his family. Before I close out, I want to ask all the fathers in here and all the fathers watching, are you being a good example? If you're online now is the time you can sow a seed and you can go ahead and take your seats if you're in the sanctuary. Uh, time to sow a seed into this ministry. You can give via cash app at uh, dollar sign the monument or you can give via PayPal at M-E-M monument of love at gmail.com. We thank you in advance for your gifts and for your seeds. It is now time for us to go into a time of altar prayer. So if you're here, if you just mind standing, if you're online, just bow with us as we go before the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you because you are a good, good Father. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that even if we've never had to experience an earthly Father, you are a heavenly Father that never fails. You are a heavenly Father that never forgets. You are a heavenly Father that never falls, Lord God. So we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the gift of real men who have stepped up to be fathers. And not just biological fathers, but even if it's uncle, uh, Lord God, if it's male teachers and male leaders that are taking on the responsibility to be a role model and to be the standard for men to be fathers, God, we thank you for that. And Lord God, we even lift up broken relationships between daughters and their fathers and sons and their fathers, Lord God. We know you are the great reconciler, Lord God, so you can bring reconciliation to any broken relationship, Lord God. God, and we just pray for healing across the land. Lord, that you would heal those broken relationships that men and women of God would look toward the heels which come to help and rely on you to be the true source of love, the true source of provision, the true, true source of strength. God, and we thank you and we love you and we honor you. And we know all things are done. We know all things are great. And all things are made because of you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. No, sir, I want to get straight to the point. So that's what I'm here to do today. All right. So today is Father's Day. It's the day we honor our fathers and our grandfathers. Yes. In Scripture, we are commanded to the Lord to honor our fathers and mothers. Uh -huh. On May the 10th, we celebrate Mother's Day. Uh -huh. And today we celebrate and honor our dads. Yes. It's Father's Day, so I'm directing my thoughts to the man. All but right. the message will benefit everyone in the family. Uh -huh. Come on, man. Today is the day. They acknowledge us. All right. The difference between Mother's and Father's Day, the gifts are about $30 cheaper. All right. <laughs> mothers get the red carpet treatment. Fathers get nothing on the $9.99. <laughs> I'm coming from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. You do not have to open your books. All right. Here we go. Right. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Yes. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my right, victorious right hand. Right. Listen, today men are not fearing God. Okay. Today children are out of control and needing role models. Yes, today God is looking for men to step up to the plate and do what God intended them to be. What? This challenge has come, to, come with a wake up call to God's man. Yes. Your wives and girlfriends need you to be godly. Amen. Your children are needing you to be godly. Yes, sir. Your churches need you to be godly. Yes, sir. So this morning, I wanted to use Father in a brief way. Right. How do you spell Father? You spell I spell Father, F-A-I-T-H, faith, a saving faith. Man. Dad, let me begin by saying, you cannot be the, father, the best father ever unless you have a saving faith. Yeah. Regardless of how much you love your children. A real man is a godly man. Yeah. 
Yes, you cannot call upon the Lord if you don't have a relationship with God. Amen. You cannot be godly without Amen. God. Woo. God's plan for man. Yes. Real man have a faithful walk with God. Yes. Be strong. Show yourself a man and observe what the Lord your God requires. Yes, sir. You cannot take someone farther than yourself you have been. Woo. Walk in his way. Yes. Yes. You can have a relationship with God and not lose your manhood. Come on, amen, amen. Come on, come on, come on. All right. You can still cry with someone and still be strong when needed. Come on, sir. Reason we need God's word in our life, the Bible is God's word. Yes, sir. It encourages us, it brings transformation, it confronts and brings hope, and empowers us to reason, temptation, and do kingdom's work. It prepares us for eternity. Many of us men grew up without any idea of who we are and how we were supposed to be in life. Quite a few of us didn't have the best role model of men or father. Yes, sir. I'm afraid that for many of us, it's just been easier to live out some of the stereotypes that we've seen. All right, all right. Men are supposed to be tough guys, side of sight, unemotional detached. Right. That usually doesn't work out well. Come on. Let me speak on things fathers say a lot. All right. Number one, you didn't hear it from me. Okay. <laughs> Number two, uh, don't throw that out. We can still use it. All right, all right. Number three, a little dirt never hurt anybody. Yes, sir. Number four, do what I say, not what I do. Oh. Number five, go ask your mother. Yes. Yes. And number six, money does not grow on trees. Yes. Money does not grow on trees. That first one was called Man Up. Right. So sorry. Right. Point two. It's three P's, protection, powerful, and player. All right. First P, protection. Ladies always depend on a man to protect them, right? All right, all right. Man, how do you feel protected? Come on. Well, the Lord said he will protect you from every evil. He will guard your soul. The Lord will guard your departure and your arrival right. from this time forever. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere. Keep him watch on the wind and the good. He said what it was behind, judgment, what it was behind and what is ahead. All the threats and all the dangers. God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether it's good or whether it's evil. Yes. God will protect all his people. Moving on, powerful. Raise your hand if you was in a powerful situation. Alright, right. Did you ask God for strength? Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, God promised to give you his power and his strength. God gives you the same energy and strength and power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead. God gave me the power to be a starting quarterback as a freshman. All right. He gave me the power to stand and do this. Yes. He gave everyone time. Yes. Yes. Come on. Moving on. Last beat, player. You would like this one. <laughs> Player, as labels together with God, we are on the same team and understand if, if the team wins, we still win. Amen. What does it take to be a team player? All right, all right. A team player is willing to do his part. Okay. A team player is a giver, not a taker. Yes, sir. He asks, what can I do to help my team instead of what can my team do to help me? A team player appreciates the opportunity to serve and investment being made in him. Yes. A team player is always working to improve. A team player compares his achievement with his goals, not with others. All right. Only Jesus Christ can hold our team together. Yes. May we look up to him, die to him, and win rewards and accomplish the missions he has given us. Uh -huh. We in church, so we team God. Yes. All right. He created us equally, so let's get treated equally yes. and be a family. Moving on, third point, GOAT, G-O-A-T. Man right. Mans know that GOAT stands for the greatest of all time. Yes. So every man in this building is a GOAT, whether it's sports, preaching, yes. mechanics, my granddaddy, yes. all types of things. So let's switch it up. GOAT stands for God over all things. All right. all right. so, So me and my cousin, we work out almost every day. Uh -huh. So I was asking myself, every lift, every run, every push-up, every pull-up, every sprint, every job, 
but somehow for his glory. Yes, sir. Man. But I never really asked myself how. The important thing to remember, I believe, is what exactly when it means is how exactly God said we should go about doing it. Fourth and final point, needs and wants. I've learned so much from my dad that the main thing I learned was to know the difference between what you want and what you need. All right, all right. But we need to be visible in our relationship with God. All right. We do this by wanting what we need, not needing what we want. Yes. We place our life in seeking God and following His lead in our life. Uh -huh. Discovering the difference between a need and a want in our life is a lot to do with our mindset and even our expectation in life. Yes. Some of us come to church in this service because there is a missing link in our life. Mm -hmm. All right. You are not exactly sure what it is, but there is a void. You have discovered that your car, your job, your iPhone, your computer, your friends, at this point in you, you have not feel that missing more in your life. Right. You have thought that them items I just mentioned were real needs, but you will soon discover that they are really a want because they fail to fill the void in your heart and life. You know there is more to life than these things, even friends, so you are searching for that in your life. You are looking to have the biggest need in your life. What are some things you need? Okay. My opinion, I need God, yeah. my parents, yeah. and love. Yes. Yes. Everybody needs love in their life. Yeah. I'm hearing this by saying, you don't need someone that's perfect. You need someone who loves you, respects you, cares for you, and understands you. May everybody bow. Father God, we come to you today seeking for another blessing that you're willing to give us. Yes, yes. We come to you requesting our biggest need in life. We ask that you continue blessing each and every heart. Yes, we come to you today wondering what's next. Yes. 2020 was an unexpected year. And here we didn't expect to have many losses and spread of virus, people protesting. We all come to you, Lord, asking for you to protect us while the world is crashing. Yes, Lord, protect us while gun violence, racism, and others Protect every, protect everyone. Lord, let 2020 be the year we come together as a family. We stand together as one. Everyone's soul needs a reset in life. 2020 is a very unexpected year. It never knows what's next. So while we're here, let's make this year count and make some be proud of. Now let every heart, mind, and soul say amen. Amen. Special shout out going out to our fathers. We, we just want to say, Oh, give thanks. Somebody shout, Oh, give thanks. Say it again, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good.
a man up for all men to be team players in our household, the Lord. We're so grateful again for Sister Kaya, who gave us great examples, great examples, Adam being the best, of how we can all be one on this earth. We'll continue to bind us together, of course. That cannot be broken. Bind us together in love.